Hi there, so my name's Aaron, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm a farrier, I live in Inverness, I moved here two years ago. Um, I wanted to start making some videos and sharing some of the work I do in and around the Highlands. It's such a beautiful place to work, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I only wish I'd moved sooner. Um, today, uh, you're gonna see a horse, uh, a bit of a welfare case, it hadn't been done for a long time, so, so there's a lot of foot to be trimmed away. Um, it was a case of we needed to put shoes back on, just simply because of the amount of foot that needed to be trimmed away. Had I not put shoes back on, I dare say she'd have been uncomfortable. Um, hopefully it's something we can look forward to, 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 to doing in the future. Um, and as if horses aren't in full-time work, which she isn't, uh, often, more often than not, they don't need shoes. So, won't keep you any longer. Hope, hope you like the videos, hope it goes well. So here's the old shoe. It's no longer fit for purpose. The foot has overgrown and outgrown the shoe, so that needs to be changed and the foot needs to be trimmed back. As you can see, the heels have really run forward, collapsed, uh, and, and, and the balance has been compromised. As you can see, there's a fair bit of foot to come off. Uh, you've got to be quite conscious when you're trimming this amount of foot off that you don't drop the inside toe and inside heel because you, you still want that foot to land flat and level once you've finished. Come on, go. So I finished with the hoop clippers now. Now what I want to do is rasp the foot, try and get it flat and level, and a smooth finish with this rasp. Um, that means when I can burn it on, then it'll be minimal burning, uh, and there'll be a good purchase between the shoe and the foot. It should make for a better fit. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Thanks, sir. Trying to sh put some shape into the foot now, trying to get that foot to correlate to the shape of the coronary band and white line. So nearly there with the trim, just need to clean the frog up, check the peripheral shape that I put into the foot matches the coronary band and white line, and that the white line is a true representation of itself and not stretched in any way. Sand still. take my time with this bit and uh, try and make the frog look as neat as possible but at the same time try not to take too much frog because it's, it's there for a purpose it's there for a reason So 
give this a quick wire brush, clean up, check that um, I'm happy with my trim before I, I move on to the next stage. final stage of my trim. This is where I like to look at the foot when the horse stands still, um, over from the front, make sure the foot looks symmetrical, uh, it correlates with that top third of the, uh, of the hoof wall from where it originates at the coronary bands. So really quickly, this is just me shaping, shaping the shoe ready to fit to the horse's foot. I previously made these shoes at the forge. Luckily, when I made the shoes, the shape I put into the shoes wasn't too dissimilar to the shape of the horse's foot that I'm about to apply them to. So, as you can see, I'm just leveling the shoe now. I'm about to take the shoe and, 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 and just check that the shape I put into the shoe is correct and matches the horse's foot so that I can nail it on safely. The reason why we do it hot is obviously it's easier to bend a piece of steel when it's hot as opposed to when it's cold. Honestly, she decided to put that on herself. And obviously got fed up of wearing it. We'll take it back. No bucket of water needed as you can see. I'm um, just cooling the shoe out now, getting it ready to, to nail on.
that's the shoe ready to be nailed on. Uh, I'm using size four pitch nails. Uh, I think they're a really nice nail and, and really easy to use. Makes my life a lot easier. So give this foot a quick wire brush, make sure there's no debris stuck to the foot that can get trapped underneath the shoe after the shoe's been nailed on. Finish trim those straggly bits of frog off I previously missed when I trimmed the foot. Just easing my seat of corn out now. That's, that's the area that you, you would find between the bars and the hoof wall. Also need to make sure there's no proud parts of sole, so just ease that, that out. As once the shoe is fitted, that could potentially create sole pressure. That's something we definitely want to avoid. As sole pressure can create a horse to go lame. Come on, girl, you're too big to be dragging me about. That was a definite miss. There's a good girl, don't I? Unfortunately, the video gets cut short here as the phone I was filming on died. Yeah. The phone died. So, quick video just to show. pleasure of watching this and listening I'll bet you any money you can't use the method I'm about to use now Oh, it's cold. No, hands are numb. There we go.
Right, well, that's that bit finished. Here you can see she's got her complimentary bracelets. As you can see, that was a horse from today. She didn't stand still the best, but in her defence, her feet were quite long as it had been a while since she'd been done. So I can imagine she'd been quite uncomfortable st stood there. Um, but I'm confident she should be feeling better now. Um, if you liked the video uh, and you'd like to follow me, you should be able to find me uh, under either Stable Forge Farriers or Aaron Matthews WCF um, on Facebook. Um, Thank you for watching. Uh, hope to see you again next time. Take care.